Thanks for the bros. How's it going? Today we are going to be explaining how to drive a manual quad, ATV, or UTV, whatever you want to call it. First, we'll be going over the beginner style with um, what would you call this? A uh, beginner clutch, I guess what you would call that. And then we will be going over the more advanced style with the more advanced clutch that you have that requires you to actually use it to you know do the bike as it's supposed to be designed. Uh, but before that, like as always, we're going to pray for the video and then we're going to get right into it. So let's pray for today's video. Uh, dear God, thank you so much for the opportunity to come out here and do stuff today. Thank you for giving us bright, open weather and beautiful blue, blue skies that we can enjoy for you and your glory. I pray that you keep us safe as we do this video and that you uh, keep everyone safe at home while they're watching. And uh, just protect anyone who's going through any issues or anything like that. In your holy and precious name I pray. Amen. Alright, let's get into the video. All right, guys, welcome back. So first off, we're going to go over the controls of the bikes and its similarities and differences. So first off, you've got your handlebars. These are your handlebar controls. You've got your thumb throttle right here. You've got your brake on the right side. Your throttle and your uh, front brakes are always going to be on your right hand. Next, on your left hand, you've got your clutch lever. You pull that in. You always want to pull that in when you start. You've also got your parking brake on this one. To engage the parking brake on this one, you push this little thing down here, pull that in, and then, it's a little tricky sometimes, pull that like that, hold it down, and then you've got your parking brake on so you won't move. Disengage it, you just pull in the clutch, like that. Next off is your little um, controls bo or control box, I guess you would call that. You've got your kill switch right here, you can flip it both ways to kill the bike if it's running. You've got your start switch right here, you got to push this in when you turn the key that'll turn your bike over and turn on you've got your headlights or headlight switch right here you got your low beams and then you got your high beams here you have your neutral light this will be green when you're in neutral and then you've got your reverse light to go into reverse i'm going to turn it on and show you so you see i'm in neutral to go into reverse there's a little lever down right here i don't know if you can see it pull that in and then pop it down one for this machine and then you're in reverse now I'll explain your feet controls. So your feet controls, on your right side, you're always gonna have your rear brakes. Push that, that's your rear brakes. And then on your left side, you've got your shifter. So on this machine, as you can see, I'm in neutral. This is all the way down. This is as far as you can go without going into reverse. One down is reverse. So in this machine, you've got five up. So it's one, first gear, and then second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on. Neutral, easy to find in this machine. One more thing, you've also got your choke right here. You want to pull this up when you start. But since we're not starting, that's about it. So yeah, that's the um, controls for the beginner machine. Now we'll move on to the Raptor. So like he was saying, these are very similar. Uh, there's the, you know basically the same aspect. This is the throttle, and then this is the front brake, just like the other one. It's pretty much always your right hand that you're gonna always be using for this one. The clutch is the same. The only difference that we have right away is the parking brake. For this one, all you have to do is pull this because it engages a spring in the back, which basically makes the brakes hold, so that way you will be all set. Or you can put it in first, whichever one you prefer. The light controls, they're pretty much self-explanatory. Right here, as you can see, there's a high beam and a low beam. The first one's low beam, first one, or next one's high beam. Kill switch, just like the other one. And then this is the starter. All you have to do is just pull in the clutch, hit the starter, twist the key. Now on a standard original Raptor 700R, your key would be right here in that triangle piece. You guys were told about that in the last couple of videos about how to move that from there, uh, for, well, from here to there, which is basically how that squared away. And then for this one, there's the neutral key, and also since it's fuel injected, it does its little startup sound effect, whatever. And then from here, you pull in the clutch like the one over there, twist this, and then downshift into first, which is another difference between it. First is down, and then the rest are up. And then you tap it one more time. Actually, I think I might have to start it for this to work. Uh, but we'll do that in just a minute anyway, and you'll see it change right here on this bar. And if it's green, you're in neutral. But for this one, it's a half step up. So you just lightly put your toe underneath it and you're already there. And if you go straight up all the way, then you're in second, which is no bueno, especially if you're trying to start it, because then you'll have to put more RPMs to get it to leave. Uh, but we'll worry about that in just a minute when we explain how to start these uh, and the differences between the starting and stuff like that. So let's get right into it. All right, guys, so welcome back. Now we'll be going over the startup procedure and how to start like actually moving. 
So first, obviously, turn the key, you got your neutral light, pull in the clutch. You always want to pull in the clutch, even if the neutral light's on, just in case you have like a loose wire or something in the neutral, it's a false neutral. If it's a false neutral, when you go to start the bike, you'll start moving. And if like you're on a trailer or you're in the back of a truck or something, and you start it and you smack forward in the front of the trailer or your truck, that wouldn't be good. Or you hit someone like Will over here. Well, regardless, you don't want to accidentally have a false neutral. So pull in the clutch, you know, to hit your starting button, it's right here. For this one, it's a little cold, so I've got to give it a little bit of gas, but it's all good. Once it warms up, it should be fine. So now when you want to start, you can let out the clutch slowly. And if it doesn't engage, then you're good. When you want to start on this one, Pull in the clutch. All your gears are going to be up on the TRX 250. This is going to be different for each machine. It could be one down, five up, or it could be just five up. We don't, it, it just depends on your machine. Just check your owner's manual or check the online forums, whatever you have. So pop it up into gear. You'll feel it pop into gear, and then you see it. You don't have your neutral light anymore. So now, once you want to start, you just want to give it a little bit of gas that's all you got to do and just slowly let the clutch out you'll feel it grab and then you'll feel it start getting all the way and then you just let it go you start like that so now once you're moving you can just put around like this for a little bit but you're eventually going to want to start shifting up and going faster to get this tree branch out of the way so once you start getting higher up in the rpms you're going to want to shift so you're basically going to do the same thing again. Let me go around this curve and I'll show you guys. So once you start hearing like it's getting a little bit louder, get a little bit noisier, you want to pull in the clutch, pop it up again into gear. So you, I'll show you. Oh. Temper mount. So you basically want to pop it up into gear. Same thing you did as you're starting. Clutch. Up, give it a little bit of gas, let out the clutch slow. There you go. That's all you gotta do. Oh my goodness, that's that's very grown. Very grown up. I see what oh my. This is a little bit grown up now. That's basically all you gotta do. When you want to go faster, clutch, up, and then let out. So now I'm gonna pull back in and then we're gonna show you how to downshift really quickly standing still because that's a little bit more complicated than up shifting so what you could do if you want to slow down pull on the clutch and then you could go back to neutral if you're not if you want to stop just go straight back to neutral so go down three times and then you can let up the clutch and then you're stopped so now we'll go park over here by will and i'll show you how to downshift all right so now i'm going to teach you guys how to downshift um, ignore that little mishap over there. This thing is temperamental and it's cold and it, it just died on me But regardless, so say you're in Second gear, right? You want to slow down a little bit But you don't want to get a neutral because you still need to keep moving like up a hill or something So basically what you want to do Is I'm not gonna hit the throttle so I don't flood it Since this is a carbureted machine, but basically what you want to do is you want to pull in the clutch This is all while you're moving downshift one I'm um, in first but downshift one like that and then at the same time you're gonna blip your throttle up so you get your rpms up just a little bit and then you're gonna let out your clutch and then you're basically gonna be so your engine speeds up to the same speed that your wheels are going so you don't put a bunch of load on your engine and then it'll slow you down so basically let me get out and show you I'm gonna start it we're gonna go out I'm gonna be going about get up to a third gear so basically just pull on the clutch up shift so now i'm in third gear and i want to slow down so i'm going to pull in the clutch down and then put my rpms up just a little bit just like that i'm going to go over it one more time we get third so i want to slow down i'm going to let off the throttle clutch down let your rpms come up a little bit exactly like that that's basically the basics of downshifting and if you don't want to do that you can also on these machines if you're going pretty slow I'm gonna get up to speed one more time you can just basically 
you can let out your clutch pretty slowly and you'll slow down. But you see how I slow down like that? It's because of the engine braking. So like, you can slow down while you're in that gear. You can let off your throttle and you'll slow down and then you can pop it down one. And then you can let out your clutch slow. That's another way of downshifting. But I wouldn't recommend doing that because that'll wear out your clutch just a little bit faster than normal. So now that's basics of the beginner quad and it's essentially the same thing for the Raptor right there. But we'll let Will explain how you basically do that for this. Alright, so we're going to go over the starting procedure for a more experienced rider style bike, if that makes any sense. So obviously your key would be up here if you're still riding the Raptor style model, but the key's right here, so it's whatever. It does its uh, like starting thing that it does it's like a factory style thing because it's fuel injected so there's no need for a choke or anything like that so whereas the trx 250x has to be warmed up this one all i have to do is pull in this hit the starter and now i'm all set i don't have to worry about anything like that i just need to go um the biggest difference between this one other than the ear ratio and the way it's set up because it's one down and then i believe five up as well just like a standard um like sport bike or anything like that, that you see on the road. Uh, for this one, when you want to basically downshift and then get ready to go, make sure you always hang on to clutch, like you were saying before, in case there's a uh, dead neutral or anything like that. But with this, you want to, you know, just let out super slow. You don't even have to add any gas to it. Just super slow enough for it to catch, and then you can let it go. So let's try this one more time. Uh, so just again, like I was saying, you just let it out super slow. Just get it, get it enough for it to catch. Try not to let it stall. And then as soon as it catches, you just let it go fully. And then from here, you don't even have to use the throttle. You can ride it like this completely. I don't recommend it because it's very boring. Now with this one specifically, what you want to do is you want to give it the adequate enough RPMs to get it rolling. Uh, nine times out of 10, you see us do this number and you just get it enough to where it starts to coast. And then when it's coasting, you're all set. Now, if you're wanting to go into, let's say, second, or go up a little bit higher and basically drive a little bit faster than just the uh, slow poke speed, what you want to do is you want to get a little bit faster so you can start encroaching in the next gear. And as soon as you get it high enough, pull in the clutch and up shift like so. Well, and, and <laughs> actually, that brings me to my next point. Don't bump shift. That's a bad habit that I picked up from uh, from the 250. Don't bump shift. What you want to do is you want to get a full all the way underneath and pick up on it. So you go all the way through neutral into second. I'll show you guys again while moving just so that way we don't prevent any more issues like that. And you see just like going down. You have to put your foot into it so that way it goes all the way down. Let's go around this because we forgot to pick this up. Anyway, so to go into second you want to get enough speed go all the way through so that way you can get all your full range of motion from top to bottom and then into a turn downshift and then go back around just like you did before and then I'll show you guys slowly downshifting so that way you guys don't have to worry about accidentally going all the way through or anything like that so that way you know there's no issues because that is a problem that's something that we've done before we've downshifted into neutral or, or downshifted or upshifted into neutral when we were trying to go to the next year so with this bad boy, I'm gonna go ahead and half, half shift it. So now that we understand how to do that, let me show you the full shifting because if you accidentally bump shift by mistake, you will go into neutral and that can be very bad, especially if you're going down a hill because then you won't be able to give it gas and get out the way of someone or if something goes bad. So let me just stand up so you guys can see a little bit. You wanna get all the way underneath, at least half of your foot and then, well, let me cut this back on. So from here, we're gonna go down. Put your foot into it, make sure it goes all the way through. And then you want to pull all the way up so it goes through neutral into second, just like that. And then for downshifting, you want to get at least half of your big toe and the center of it and then back down. And you guys will get better at it as soon as you practice more, especially if you're using riding boots because this was something that I had to get used to as well. I believe we have one more thing left for this video, so we're going to go back to Andrew's POV and then we'll get everything squared away hopefully this does help you guys and we'll see you guys in just a bit as you guys can pretty much tell this is the ins and outs of basically everything you need to know uh, we're going to do a quick little recap for both of the bikes just so there's no confusion and we have everything all squared away so without further ado let's get into it all right guys welcome back first we're going to go over the controls and basically everything we just talked about 
for the TRX250. So first, like I already said, the controls, handlebar controls, clutch, you've got your starting switches and your light controls, parking brake, you got your front brakes and your throttle. Next is your feet controls, right foot, your rear brakes, push that down, you engage your rear brakes. Left side is your shifter. And then after that, we went over the starting procedure, give it a little bit of gas, let up your clutch, and then it engages and then you go. Basically it. All right, so just like the 250, we basically explained the controls. We have the clutch, the kill switch, the lights, the parking brake reverse, the throttle, the brakes on both sides, front and back, because they're always gonna be on your right side. The gear shifter, just like before, and then also we did go through some uh, driving stuff like that, so we could show you exactly what not to do with the whole bump shifting thing, because that is something that I've done personally, and I know that Andrew's done it once or twice too. In fact, in one of our Carolina Venture World videos, we do have some stuff like that as well for actually both of them, actually. So be sure to go check out those series if you do want to see us in full action. Uh, but yeah, that's basically everything that we've covered today. So we'll go right into uh, the outro or whatever else we have planned for this video and then we'll call it. So we'll see you guys in whatever we have next. All right, so hopefully some of these tips that we gave you guys from our experiences will help you guys out a little bit. And uh, if you did find something helpful, please be sure to comment in the comment section down below. And if we did miss anything, please let us know and we'll uh, be sure to explain in the next upcoming video. Like as always, be sure to like and subscribe and we'll catch you guys next time. What's up, Wheeler Bros? I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed, and I want to say a huge thank you to your support. It has meant the world to us. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. It's free, you can change your mind at any time, and plus it helps out the channel. If you guys want to stay connected with us throughout everything we do, please be sure to go follow our links in the description down below, and uh, yeah. Speaking of description, we have links in our description all the way from parks that you guys have seen on the channel, all the way down to our our biggest supporter, Mr. Travis True at Skyline Signs. And as always, I like to say a huge thank you, and uh, thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.